IGM just did something, approved of something that is wholly shocking because usually when we talk about IGN, which is very rare. I mean, the last time we talked about IGN dealt with Philip Mewson and like literal plagiarism on their website. It's almost always a negative take because we don't really have a lot of positive reasons to talk about uh, video game media outside of, you know, if they have an interview or something like that and they happen to be a source. But this is hilarious and I'm so glad it happened because IGN just savagely, brutally went after Electronic Arts for how they are treating the Nintendo Switch. Just wow. <laughs> I did not see this coming today. But before I get into that, I have to remind you, we have a couple giveaways going on. One for a Nintendo Switch, a uh, an Xbox Series X, or a PlayStation 5. Also, two copies of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Enter those giveaways. Head down to the description. We're also on our road to 100K. Uh, so let's try to get there in 2020. And if we do, we have a massive thousand plus dollar giveaway happening in uh, January. So uh, yeah, like this video, comment on it, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to hit that bell icon. All right. This is awesome. So I saw this earlier on my Twitter feed and I didn't think anything of it. Uh, but I finally decided to go check out the FIFA 21 review uh for well fifa on nintendo switch because they keep bringing out this game every single year uh and there is kind of a mantra that you know there's no changes year to year with sports games but it's also sort of a meme more than it is reality there are actual changes year to year uh beyond roster updates well unless it's fifa on switch so this was by simon cardi and it was posted today, and it says, Seen as EA copy and pasted last year's FIFA on Switch again this year. Once again saying it has the same gameplay without any new development or significant enhancements on its store page for the full price. Full price of $49.99. I've decided to do the same and copy paste my review of FIFA 20 on Switch below as my review for FIFA 21. And he means literally copy. The first line talks talks about how you have no reason to purchase FIFA 20. He didn't even bother to change that to 21. He literally just copy pasted the review. Keep in mind, he has a review copy of the game and knows there is no difference. Just updated rosters and that is it. Um, and yeah, he even lowered his score. Last year he gave it like a 3 or a 4 or something like that. This year a 2. So he did do one adjustment to his review. He lowered the score for them doing this again. Now, I applaud this. I mean, seriously, bravo IGN, both this writer and the editors approving of them doing this instead of writing a new review. Because let's be honest, nobody should be buying FIFA 21 on Switch. I don't care if you want those updated rosters. Buy an older FIFA game and buy one of the fan-created roster updates. There's no, or downloaded, I should say. There's no reason to buy FIFA 21. What The, the way that EA has been treating the Switch is, an, is embarrassing. I realize there's a couple solid examples out there, but when it comes to flagship titles, they're either not present, or when they bring them, like FIFA, it's a dumbed-down, last-gen version version that uh they are just charging full price for year after year after year without making any changes like ea is not even hiding it anymore they used to try to hide it now that they call it the legacy edition they're not even hiding that they're not making any changes that they're just repackaging the same game with an updated roster this makes ea an even further laughing stock in the industry but honestly EA actually has been doing okay for itself. You know, they had that Squadrons game come out. Turns out that game's actually pretty good. It's only 40 bucks. Like, that's cool. They, they just had Jedi, Jedi Fallen Order come out. Yes, they did have some controversy surrounding Madden. And now they have controversy, controversy surrounding FIFA on Switch. But, like, in general, they've been more hit than miss lately. But I got to be honest, man. EA deserves it. Switch owners, do not buy FIFA. Uh, I mean, I don't even want you buying old versions. Don't buy FIFA on Switch. I get it. It's nice having a portable version of the game. It's the best portable FIFA game of all time. I get it. 
But I'm sorry. We can't keep letting these companies get away with treating Nintendo. I mean, this isn't even treating us like second-class citizens. At least in the past, they would attempt to add new features year over year. At least for the first couple times they brought FIFA out in 2017 and 2018. They stopped trying in 19, stopped trying in 20, and definitely aren't trying in 2021. Like, guys, they are just literally trying to fleece you for the game you already likely bought two years ago. It's time to stop letting companies get away with this crap. I would rather them not release a new FIFA than do this. I The thing is, we know their engine can run on Switch. We know Frostbite can run on Switch. It's not a question of the engine running because we've seen it run on mobile phones with worse um, processing power than available on Switch with less RAM. We know it can run. They just don't do it. Honestly, as we start to see games like you know Doom and now Doom Eternal, uh, which is eventually supposed to come out at this point, probably 2021 at this point, uh, you know we've seen Witcher 3. Uh, we, we've had the Gollum game confirmed for next year. It's a next-gen game coming to Switch. Like We're seeing these more visually impressive games than FIFA uh, come out on Switch, and it, it just makes you realize how lazy, how little that EA truly cares about Switch. They've been slapping Switch owners in the face from day one, and they just keep doing it. Now, it's I, it's better, I would say, than what happened with the Wii U, uh, back in the Wii U, for those that forgot. I don't know how you can. We bring it up all the time. Uh, but EA had an unprecedented partnership with Nintendo, and to be fair, they brought a bunch of games. But, man, that support dropped off a cliff after, like, one year. Now, you know, they're being... You know, none, they're not promising the world here to Switch owners, but man, outside of like Unravel and Unravel 2, what is EA bringing out that's worthwhile? I guess Need for Speed is supposed to be decent on Switch. Uh, I, I think it leaked in Mexico or something like that. Like it was up for pre-install, but the pre-install like was broken, and so you could actually play the game. So we've actually seen the new Need for Speed uh, Hot Pursuit remastered already in action on Switch, and it looks it looks solid. Uh, it doesn't look like you're losing much compared to other versions. Obviously, lower resolution and frame rate, but uh, I just, I got to say that uh, in general, beyond the Need for Speed, because they actually did a good so job with Need for Speed on uh, Wii U as well, they just don't give a shit. And frankly, I'm a person that I tend to not give a shit about EA, but then they come out with a game I want to play, like Squadrons. They come out with games I'm interested in, like Dragon Age. They come out with games that I, you know, used to be interested in a lot more, like Madden. And it saddens me that we can't get these games on Switch. Like, uh, someone the other day said, man, you know, they'll never bring Madden to Switch. Well, even if they did, they're just going to give us a five-year-old version of the game. They definitely aren't giving us the current version. This needs to stop. If EA wants to be successful on Switch, and third parties, like Square Enix... Third parties, like uh, you know, even CD Projekt Red, are proving you can be successful on Switch, then it starts by treating the consumers of Switch with respect and giving us the best possible version of the game you can. Not copy-paste, updated rosters, have a good day. You are fitting right into the meme of sports games that all they are is the same game every year. It's not true. Even Madden this year, it's not exactly the same game. There are gameplay differences uh, that you know you notice, uh, at least I've noticed while playing. But man, oh man, this is ridiculous. And honestly, IGN, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is nice to see major big media call EA out on their shit. The only thing I'm disappointed in is they gave the game a 2. I guess it's technically playable. But, I mean, it's copy-paste. It's like they're plagiarizing themselves. That's a 0 in my book. All right, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojets from the Tender Prime. Thanks for tuning in, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.